Welcome back to the channel. A little bit tanner. Uh, just got back from Nevis and I'm here to show you some pics. Uh, I'm going to try and do a little video over top of some photos, talk about them a little bit. As you'll see, I got gung-ho about some video in the beginning and then I just didn't give a crap after a little bit because um, I was just focused on enjoying my time and taking photos. Uh, so let's, let's get started. Now, as you saw in the opening clip, I got up early to get down to the airport and um, I had to get up at like 2.15 in the morning just to be out the door by 3, 3.30 for a 6 a.m. flight. We live an hour, hour and 10 minutes from the airport. And it was super early. And that's when we come across our first photo. My wife was walking across the parking lot and this light, and I just wanted to kind of capture that on our way view. And, and this was it right here. This is the 24F2 on the SL2S. Did this in black and white because it was super, super dark out and I thought black and white was a lot better. So that's the first photo. We eventually got down to the airport after flying from Detroit to Miami and then Miami to St. Kitts and uh, boarded, uh, boarded a bus. And so at the port where we boarded this bus, there was a bunch of cool stuff like an old boat right here. You see this boat right here. Um, just a cool shot. I don't think anything special, I'm just kind of capturing the scene. But what was a really cool boat was this yacht. This yacht is owned by, I forget the guy's name, but he owned a bunch of dealerships uh, car dealerships that were eventually bought by Berkshire Hathaway. As you can tell, this is not a small boat for scale. There is a helicopter on the back of it. And I just thought this was cool. And I like the way that the turquoise blue water contrasted against the blue sky. And I thought it was a really cool look. On the boat, took a picture of the captain here. Just want to kind of set the scene. This is where the 24 millimeter really shined. I think 24 was uniquely wider, different, and better than 28. So I think I made the right choice on doing that. And uh, just want to kind of capture that scene. When we arrived to the island, we hopped off the boat and uh, instantly were struck by the beauty of the Four Seasons. Any of you guys ever been to the Four Seasons on Nevis, the island of Nevis? It's absolutely phenomenal. And what you're going to see throughout my photos is the sky kind of really pop because through most of these photos, I had a polarizer, a circular polarizing filter on my camera, and that really helped to keep the clouds and the detail on the sky without it being blown out or washed out and helped me kind of get the glare off the water and, and capture those colors that was in the water. So you can see in this shot right here, it's just cool, I got the little dinghy on the left-hand side. I think it's kind of a cool photo. One of the first things you walk into the Four Seasons Resort is you see the pool. Now there's several pools there, but this pool in particular is the main focal point. As you walk through the building and you walk out the back, this pool is right here. And I really like this shot. To me, it's like something you'd see on one of their brochures. Um, and just kind of, it's just the warm tones, the blue sky, the yellow, uh, umbrellas and, and this, the, the green and wooden. I just think this is um, this is an interesting or a good looking photo. So I was happy with that. What was also really really cool is that the way the resort set up is now you typically in a, in a room you'd want like beachfront access, but in this resort we actually had a mountainside view. And this is a quick black and white shot looking through two palm trees at Mount Nevis behind us. What I like about this is it's kind of a natural framing, which frames at the mountain, which is covered in clouds, but also you can see the palm trees in shadow on the ground. So I kind of like that shot. Um, just a quick grab shot right here, uh, if, I, if I even want to include this, I guess I will, of uh, some umbrellas. Uh, what I like about this shot, um, not that it's anything special, it kind of sets like the feel of what you're looking at all, all the whole trip. Again, as a photo, is it standing on its own? No, not that great. But for me, it kind of reminds me and feels of the tone. The other thing that I liked a lot were the flowers, the vegetation. There was a lot of flowering trees as you would get in a lot of Caribbean areas. Um, so I, throughout this video, you're gonna see me taking pictures of flowers. This was just some kind of huge, beautiful red flower and I thought it was cool. So I took a photo um, of that one right there. Going forward a little bit, um, we, we ended up kind of getting there in the middle of the, of the Saturday and kind of just got our bearings. We were exhausted, but we decided that we weren't going to hit the bar real hard or anything like that that night. And we ended up decided to get up early the next morning at 6 a.m. And it was totally worth it because I think I got some of my best photos, or at least from a color perspective, by getting up early. This photo you're looking at right now is what was out our back patio uh, in the morning. 
um, and, and it's Mount Nevis covered in clouds. You can see the sun rising behind it, kind of like this glowing fireball. And uh, it just I, I like the footpath out, and it leads you right to that glowing fo fireball um, in this picture. And so that's what I like about it. Now, what's interesting is, uh, check, this is why you shoot raw, guys. Here is the raw photo, and I did this intentionally. And then you can see what I ended up with. Um, it, it just, it, it, you couldn't do both. It's kind of an HDR-ish picture, but I think this looks a lot better done this way. I shot underexposed on purpose and brought the shadows way back and kept the highlights, protected the highlights in, in the shot. Here's another one, similar thing, just different lower perspective. I like the first one better. Maybe some of you guys might like the second one better, but it's all good. Um, I then grabbed the 90 millimeter lens, took the 24 off, and as you can see, there's a you know a, a golf flag in the background because outside our door was the golf course. And again, you get more of the mountain. Um, this one's not as good. I don't think there's as much interesting stuff there, but uh, not bad. Same thing here. I, I tried taking a picture of the mountain with a longer focal length. I think the 24 was far the far better choice for these type of shots. And so I use the 24 the most by, by a long shot. Um, after we kind of got our stuff together, we walked down the beach and, you know, I, I really liked the fact that you can kind of see St. Kitts in the background because Nevis and St. Kitts are the same country, but they're separated by water. You have to take it by boat. And I just was trying to play with some of the umbrellas and the lighting and whatever. And this is where I needed the 90. So I was really glad to kind of grab the longer focal length. Uh, and what you'll see here is I'm try I was trying to get this boat in the water and, and bring the mountains closer. The 24 is so wide that the mountains seem small and not to scale. And so that's why I put the 90 on there. I ca candidly don't think these shots are that good. The first decent shot I got from this is this roll of umbrellas doing a vertical shot. And what I like about it is, is you follow the umbrellas around from the bottom right corner, it takes you into the uh, mountains on the left-hand side. So I think that works from that perspective. I did one vertically, and then you can also see the same similar effect here on one that's horizontal. Um, and I think it works. I think it's a decent photo. We then took our, a walk um, further down the beach and headed towards the golf course where there was another pool. Uh, I just, I, I like the colors in this pool. I, it shows you kind of the gardening. It just sets the scene, right? Nothing, nothing from a photographic perspective that's overly too interesting. Um, here's a shot I like of the, of the purple flower. This was really pretty. I think the camera did a really good job of bringing these colors um, out and um, just kind of having something nice fall off. I, I just thought this thought this was a, a, a nice photo of some of the natural vegetation. Um, as we walked down the golf course, the sun really started to pop out behind the mountains that morning. And uh, actually, my wife took this shot. This you can see the golf flag right there. Uh, we're kind of sitting behind below the green a little bit. You can see the sun coming out, so not a bad photo. But then walking back down number 18, the sun really started to pop. And this is one of my favorite photos. Sorry, I bumped the microphone. This is one of my favorite photos in the entire trip. Uh, what I like about this is you have the three layers. You have the bush in the front and the bottom left. You got the bridge in the middle that acts as a kind of a focal point. And you got this amazing sun on the upper left-hand corner. And it just has a real nice warm glow to it. Uh, and on the right, right corner, you've got ne Mount Nevis covered in clouds. I don't know why, but I really like this photo. There's something about it that I really, really enjoy. And this one might, might end up being one of the ones I get printed. It's a, it's a contender. Um, walked to the front of the resort after we kind of walked around the golf course a bit um, and tried taking some shots. And you kind of see here the four seasons. This is from the outside steps. You have a lobby. Then as you go through the lobby, you can see that there's the uh, ocean um, in, in the background, and that's where that pool resides. Took a couple photos from this perspective. This one a little bit further in, just to kind of show you guys what it looks like. Try to use some framing. I think they're forgettable. They're okay, but um, it is what it is. After that, we sat down, had some breakfast, and just kind of took the beauty in. And there was this like path of vegetation behind me that had Nevis in the background. Now, I don't know if this photo works. I took it from two different perspectives. I'll show you both of them here. Um, but what I like about this is, for, you know, from, from the first one, you can see Nevis clearly in the background, and all the vegetation kind of cuts out and leaves you to kind of focus there as the sun's coming up. The second one focuses, focuses more on the flowers, but you can still tell that Nevis is in the background. Um, I think it's the colors, tones, and, te and texture one on this I like. Again, not my best photo, but I think for some reason it kind of works for me. Um, we then walked down and, and got some uh, more coffee and decided to sit on this beautiful pier that they had that were dropping people off on um, the Four Seasons as they brought people in from St. Kitts. 
and they had like a bar out there at night and they had seating. And the way back is just like amazing glow. And this is one of those instances where the polarizer totally saved the photo because it would have completely washed out my lens and we would not have any of this detail in the sky. And what I like about it, it's super warm on the boardwalk. Um, you get an idea of the scale and the perspective of the water and, and the mountain. And then because I was stopped way down at like F, I don't even know what this was, F22 or F16, you get the starburst at the very, very top. And uh, this, you know, I thought this ended up being really cool. I really like this one. So that's another one of my favorite photos. Um, took some portraits of some coworkers. I'll skip those for you guys because they probably don't want to sh want me showing those. Um, so yeah, later that day, we ended up going on a, a Jeep tour. And this Jeep tour just took you around the island of St. Kitts and told you about the history of it. Uh, this picture right here is me kind of hanging out, but you can see as we're driving into St. Kitts, uh, just... You know, obviously on the left-hand side, you've got the, the open-air Jeep that we're in. And on the right-hand side, you get the beautiful blue water, and you can see some of the mountain ranges. So I thought that was kind of beautiful. As we headed into St. Kitts, we were able to see a lot of the local culture. And I really wanted to see some of this because you're in the Four Seasons. It's like this super high-end, expensive uh, establishment. But St. Kitts and Nevis is not a rich country. Um, and so you started to see how the locals lived. And what was interesting, you know, just kind of metaphoric, to get deep for a second. The locals, at least in my opinion, were all super, super nice, even though they came from very uh, underwhelming living conditions sometimes. They're very nice people, very accommodating, very interested in us. And their main form of, of um, income over there as a country is now tourism, so maybe that's why. But I just thought a lot of the pastel colored buildings against these, these blue skies and stuff looked good. So I just took a couple pictures as we were driving, this one here of this green building. Um, this one's here, a quick portrait of a tour guide. I believe I took this, if I'm looking here at the picture below me, I believe I took this with the 50 millimeter um, SL Sumacron. Nope, I'm just kidding. This is the 24F2. And what you'll notice with these, these Sigma lenses is it has kind of that busy bokeh. I like it, but they're both, they're both incredibly sharp lenses. Um, the detail here on this guy's face, I hope it doesn't get just demolished by YouTube compression, is extremely sharp. It's really, really good. This guy was super nice, had a kind of a British accent, very knowledgeable. Um, and just wanted to capture the two guide for the moment. What he's showing us in that last picture is this. This is an old plantation, a sugar plantation. And he went through the whole history of the sugar culture and, you know, obviously there was slavery and all the different stuff on the island. And we got to walk through this and I just wanted to capture this. I just, I love the three peaks. I, I love the old tree on the right hand side that was um, an, a marker for the building itself. You get the fountain out front. It just, it showed... It reminds me of what I saw, so I thought this was a cool picture. And as you walk through the back, I like this photo as well. Um, it's just the gate, it's just kind of old brick and textures and paths and leading lines. Um, nothing overly compelling here, but I like that there's a path that leads to that door, which is open, which leads you to another door behind it, if you guys didn't catch that, so I kind of like that. Took this shot inside the um, plantation to kind of just document. Uh, I, thought, I thought the light coming out through the window and hitting on the wood and the different textures was nice. Uh, I'm kind of skip through that. We got another building here, a lot of colors, green and, and green and yellow. Um, so I just want to kind of capture some of those colors. And here's a photo I wish I would have got, but the Leica SL2S photo tracking, quite quick recognition is not quite as good as Sony, Nikon, or Canon. Uh, and this kid was riding a wheelie down the street. I wish I would have nailed this because this would be a really cool photo. It's obviously a miss. I included it in here. It's back focused, but uh, just goes to show you sometimes it matters. I then got my full-blown Willem Verbeek style. If you guys don't know who Willem Verbeek is, film photographer, he like is in California and takes pictures of like colors and, and not colors, uh, flowers and stuff that are there, homes, corners of gas stations, one of those things. And uh, I, I just saw these beautiful flowers and I kind of like I liked them. So I took a photo of those, a couple different pictures of it. Um, I thought they turned out really well. In Michigan, we don't have that. So for me, that's stuff that, that, that drew my eye. As part of this tour, then we went up into the mountains, into the jungle, and we got to tour some more things. Um, and there were some just really cool plants. Again, more vegetation. Here's a picture of this plant that I think looks really, really cool. Um, it's pretty, kind of shows you the surroundings and, and kind of how the, the, the plants look there. Um, here's my wife popping through some flowers. She's gonna kill me for this one. I'm sorry, honey, I'm sorry. But I think it's a cool photo. Um, next here, we've got a coworker of mine. I'm including him this time because you can't see his face. And he's got his hat on and he's looking out. He's got some cool shoes on. I just thought it was a cool photo. You got kind of the bush framing into him. He's looking out. I, I like the photo. I think it's interesting. There was also on this plantation a bunch of animals. So I started grabbing those. 
This shot right here of this white, this is a goat. They're kind of goats or they're descendants of sheep actually, I think. Um, what is kind of cool. And what I like about it is, first of all, I like that the white sheep's looking right at me. I like the white sheep on top of the brown sheep thing, whatever this is, a little contrast. This 90 has a, like, I got a real busy bokeh, but I think it makes the picture interesting or to me it's pleasing anyways. And you've got um, two other sheep things in the background kind of framing it. There's some symmetry to this photo that is interesting to me. So I, I decided to include it in this. Um, we then walked up into the plantation to take a tour of it. Uh, I just stopped here because the colors were popping. I liked them. He had the white on that turquoise with the warm um, kind of sky in the background. And then you had those, uh, that, that reddish clayish colored floor. So I took the photo here. And then we got up top, you could see out um, across the Atlantic and, and across the other side of, uh, of the plantation. And it, it was beautiful. Um, Capture some details. There was some old uh, china laying out. So I took a photo of that as we skip through quickly. Again, another beautiful flower I took a picture of um, here. And, uh, I, you know, I, as we're heading back, I, I saw our tour guide walking down this hill. And I don't think this is a great photo. The fact that uh, my coworker is kind of in the way um, sucks. And taking pictures of people's backs just kind of sucks. But I was, trying to, I was trying to frame him down this tunnel of trees, and it, it just didn't work. So um, showing you my failures, failures as well as my successes on this one. Some more photos of the animals that were there um, on this photo here. This guy looking right at me. This is with the 90 f2.8. Again, an incredibly sharp lens um, with some interesting character bokeh. Took a picture of the tour guide, had documented. This is more of a documentary thing. Um, but then there comes uh, one of the photos that I would consider to be um, kind of artsy. And as we were coming back down through the jungle, we noticed that this couple, uh, or a man and a woman, um, gardening up on this hill by itself overlooking the ocean now this photo is actually a super crop it's probably 40 percent of the actual photo because my co-worker's massive head is in the bottom left corner but i cropped it and i did it in black and white because it gives me the nostalgic thing and what i like about this is there's two things going on one there's the line across the, the image that kind of leads you across it but two there's a a, a foreground bushel of plant and then you got the two workers in the middle and you got this one single tree off to the left. I don't know what it is, but I really like this photo. Big negative space up top in the sky. I think this is a cool photo. And this is again, another one of those ones that I would consider printing um, or definitely putting into the photo book as a, as a result. On the way back, I slapped the 50 on and I took some photos of some of just the vegetation. So here's one of the trees full of fruit, which I thought was interesting. And then as we started heading our way back after the trip um, down to the, the port, we stopped at, what's this place called? Thomas Hill? I think it's called Thomas Hill. I could be wrong on this. And um, we had a chance to overlook this road that we took. There's only one road that sh looks down St. Kitts. And in the very background, you can see Mount Nevis. It's, it's kind of a postcard spot. And I got the photo. And again, I this this photo, this, can't, this shot doesn't have the polarizer on it, but I think this is another one of those touristy photos. I think it's cool. I like it. And um, this was done just out of, a, out of the open air Jeep as we parked for like two seconds. So I, I kind of like this photo. On the way back, I took a few more photos while we were driving, get, trying to capture the coastline. It's just pretty, pretty scenery stuff. We had this island here that was kind of popping out of this peninsula, took a photo of that. Um, you know, I, if I had time to set up on a tripod and do sunsets, sunrises, the opportunity for landscape photography is, is incredible. Uh, and that was pretty much it in terms of photos for that day. The next day we headed out on a rum tour and um, there are a lot of interesting things there, but this is how they bury their dead. Now they are buried six feet under, but they put the grave memorial above them. So I wanted to just capture that. Again, this is another one of those, I don't know if you print this photo, but you certainly tell your relatives or people about it. So I thought it was worth capturing. As we headed into town, we met with this uh, guy that owns Clifton Estate, which is a rum um, and alcohol, I guess, producer in the area, a local uh, producer and we got to bottle our own rum. And so I captured some photos there of him kind of going through the motions of telling us different things about it. I had the 50 SL on at this point. I didn't even bring other lenses for this. I just put the 50 on all day. Um, and I had the GR in my pocket, which you guys will see in a little bit. I just captured pictures of this of my wife bottling it and uh, waxing the top. And we got to, got to bring these home. And I actually think this, this rum is very good tasting. So I am going to be drinking this souvenir for sure. 
Uh, next, we tell, uh, went to a place called Hermitage, or yeah, I think it's called Hermitage. It's another old plantation. It's now a restaurant, but they have like little homes that you can stay in there. Super cool. If you guys are going to go to St. Kitts, I'm sorry, this is on Nevis. If you're going to go to Nevis, you can stay here. Tons of character. Really, really cool place. It was beautiful. And this is just one of the local shops they had out front. I captured some of the clay pots that were sitting on uh, one of the shelves. Um, there was a very nice bartender in there. And again, I just got captured a, like a candid portrait of her um, making drinks for people and cleaning dishes. And I just took some more photos around the garden. It was beautiful. They had these big flowering trees and benches underneath them. I tried to capture some of that and take it all in. And I thought it was beautiful. Some of the flowers that were hanging out there. Um, it was awesome. And from that place, we ended up heading, heading our way down to um, Hamilton's birthplace. So Alexander Hamilton was actually born in Nevis. Uh, I think he stayed there till he was nine and he came back to the U.S. And as you know from history, he had a, played an important role um, in our banking system. So that's interesting. Um, later that night, we ended up going to um, a place called Sunshine's. It's the very famous restaurant on Nevis. And um, we thought this guy was the owner because we looked it up online. It's not. He's not the owner. But I took this portrait of him with a 24 millimeter on it. I had that on front of my camera. And it's just, I like the blue car. The colors are popping. And again, YouTube algorithm compression be damned. This photo is incredibly sharp. It looks really, really good. So I included this photo here. I uh, also had a guy that was out there hand making, um, hand carving wood. He obviously saw me taking a picture of him. So he's looking right at me. I threw this in, a little bit of street, if you will. Um, and that was really, really cool. Uh, the next morning, and I'm realizing these pictures are out of order, but the next morning we end up uh, grabbing a golf cart um, to go tour the Four Seasons uh, golf course because we wanted to get pictures of some of the monkeys. So uh, we tried to get up early, as early as we could in a lot of these, and um, not drink ourselves into oblivion. This was just cool. I like the flowering bush behind the old... Uh, I don't know what this is. I think it's an old like sugar um, factory, uh, ruins from a sugar factory. Uh, I just thought that was a, um, a beautiful looking picture. So I took that. We did eventually run into the monkeys. This photo here, you can kind of see they're all up on this hill in the shade. Um, and I ended up getting a photo. This photo actually, I cropped it vertically. It's a horizontal photo. So the megapixel count is super low on this, but I just love the tree on the left-hand side and the monkey on, by itself on the right-hand side. I thought that looked good. Um, as we drove around a little further, I just liked this, this tree stump or tree roots that were growing off the cliff, kind of like the survival. I thought there was a lot of cool texture here. So I, I think between the monkey one I just showed you and this one, I think these are both kind of cool artsy photos. I like them. I'm happy with them. A um, few more photos of the monkey here. Again, this is with the 90 f 2.8. Incredibly sharp lens, um, or seems incredibly sharp from what my, the one I have, and uh, just, just looks really, really, really good. Um, okay, I'm realizing I just showed you these photos in order by Leica to Rico. So all the ones you saw were all Leica photos throughout the day. Um, now kind of going back chronologically with the Rico photos, uh, I'm going to kind of go through some of these quickly. But this is a bird shot off the Rico. This bird did move, wasn't scared. Uh, put the camera up pretty close to it. Again, this is a 28 millimeter lens, right? Or 18 millimeter on crop. So, um, and it's incredibly sharp here. I think this looks really, really good. Um, this photo here is from the dinner we had for the first night. They had a steel drum band that played. I got this photo. Uh, it's a noisy picture, but I put it in black and white and it works. And again, I, I think this kind of captures the scene and I like this photo quite a bit. Uh, I got a picture of these three palm trees. I just thought kind of isolation on the blue, the blue sky it looked really, really cool. Um, another photo of one of the other pools capturing that. I think this photo looks pretty good. Um, and then that night we had another dinner, or I'm sorry, the following night we had a dinner and I brought the Rico with me. So the strategy was, is the SL2S went out with me during the day when we were on these excursions, took all those pictures. And then the Rico lived in my pocket at night um, because I was obviously at dinner and I didn't want a big camera over my shoulders. And I think that combination worked out really, really well. So you saw the steel drum guy from the first night's dinner. This picture is a silhouette from the next night's picture. Uh, there's a lot of distractions in the photo. I just included it because I thought it was a nice sunset. Same here, I turned around from that photo I just showed you and took a picture of kind of the scenery just interesting, like you got people, the building, the mountain, and the clouds, and then a big negative space up top. I, I kind of like it, even though it's not anything special. Um, capture a picture of the saxophone player, uh, maybe some other wind instrument, but these guys are playing. I, I think it's a cool photo. One thing the Rico allows me to do that the SL doesn't is kind of one-handed, just put it up in you know someone's face. 
candidly and, and get these photos. And it worked really well to get some of these shots. So I like this photo too. Um, let's see, this is the now the third morning uh, out walking around, took a photo of the pool again from the other end of things. So interesting, this didn't have a polarizing filter on it. It still retains some of the detail in the sky. It looks pretty good. It's just, just different perspective for me to show you guys. Um, now these photos are back from that plantation I mentioned. Again, this is another flowering tree, or I'm sorry, a tree that's bearing fruit with a bench underneath it. I like the colors, I like the texture. I took the same, same tree here at the bench, but turned around and got the house in the background, all the moss on it and the colors. Uh, it just kind of, to me, shows, shows what we saw and I enjoy that. Same thing here, shooting through this arch, another angle of this house, got kind of a tree in the way with a bunch of flowering stuff on it. I thought it was a, a cool looking thing. Um, walking out, I saw these steps with these pots on it, light coming through. Uh, again, just more of texture, tones, colors, playing with that on the Ricoh GR. And these couple last photos are some of my favorites from the last day um, where, you know, the sun was starting to go down and started coming into the evening time a little bit and the sailboat was going by. Just took a nice wide shot. Um, the sailboat's in the middle. I think that catches your attention first, but then you realize below it is somebody swimming there um, and so I kind of like that photo. This one here, same thing. It's a little left to right action. I keep bumping the mic. Uh, there's an umbrella kind of takes to the left side of your frame. There's the person standing kind of towards the middle of the frame. There's the sailboat. And for me, it leads my eye from left to right. When a photo intentionally leads my eye a certain direction, I'm, I'm attracted to it. And this last one here is um, the Altrix, which is the company I work for, uh, sign they put up for one of the last dinners. Um, I shot this directly into the sun and, I, you know, it actually held up pretty well. It, it didn't completely destroy um, the light and the lens flare. And so I think this has a nice warm glowy appearance to it. So I, I kept I kept it in here. Um, as we finished dinner that night, we uh, lit out some lanterns. I got a couple photos of that. This is a coworker of mine and his wife. Uh, this was a super noisy photo because that against ISO 6400, but uh, converted to black and white and you know just kind of captures the moment. So I like that one. I got another photo of them releasing the balloons into the sky. More documenting, documenting, but I think it looks pretty good. And then on the way out, as we boarded to get on our boat to go back to St. Kitts to catch our flight on the last and final day, again, the GR living in my pocket, um, I captured this photo kind of as a, a goodbye. And what I like about it, to me anyways, is that this person's walking away uh, in the photo, and it kind of signifies to me like going away, goodbye. You know, like we're leaving. Um, might think that's a stretch, but to me, this looks like the guy's walking away and he's going into somewhere and you know, it's, it's goodbye. So I, I kind of like this photo. On the boat, I wanted to capture Nevis with their uh, flag. So Mount Nevis is in the background here. And then you can see the flag flapping in the wind on this boat. That's obviously wind torn. So to me, that's kind of significant, or at least it signifies, hey, that's Nevis and this is the flag. So I thought that was nice. Um, this is just a coworker of mine on, on the boat. It really, there's no purpose for this, but um, I like the tones. I like that he's looking out the window. And again, it's kind of a goodbye thing.